You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thank you for tuning in to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our friend and radio executive producer, Ethan Euchre. Happy to be here as always. We have world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, your story is one that I find so compelling because you started off, you're living the American dream. When you went into medicine, your father almost cut you off from the family because you didn't go into what he perceived to be uh, your path for business. And you said you wanted to do and, and be in medicine. You wanted to be a doctor. And he pretty much went, well, if that's your path, you go and do it, but you're all on your own. And you had very little money in your pocket, and you made it through medical school. Then not only did you study overseas, but then you came to this country, and you continued on that medical journey. And you did not have a lot of money on you. You, uh, you actually lived for a short time in a morgue to be able to get yourself through medical school. And I know you kind of laugh and it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable because we're telling some personal stuff. But this is what's so intriguing about you is you didn't give up. You had the tenacity. You you had to learn another language. You came to this country and you made it. Mm -hmm. And then you trained in traditional spine surgery and you saw, you know, you went through medicine and you didn't just pay attention to parts of the spine and neurosurgery, but you really paid attention to everything. And then you went on your path for spine surgery and you learned those traditional textbook teachings and you saw the inadequacies with the outcomes of those things. And it got to you and you became disheartened. And then you trained on other joints of the body in arthroscopy. And you decided to tackle that for a while because you were unhappy with the results from traditional spine surgery and then one day you said you were at a medical conference and light bulb you knew the technique you you figured out how to access the spine in a different way and then another day you were driving and you developed the tool that got you to that point and boom there became the journey for your patented Bonatti spine procedures that are exclusive to you and your facility. I, I never will tell stories anymore to you. But, <laughs> but it's an incredible story because some people think that you had a silver spoon in your mouth and everything was hand fed to you. And it's not the case. You fought for everything. And then he became the target of like witch hunts. How dare he do this? His things are experimental, and they're not. Over 30 years later, they are not experimental. They are tried, and they are true. Uh, with that said, we have an exciting show. On today's show, we're going to speak with Stephen Yaffa, award-winning screenwriter, journalist, and author of Grain of Truth, The Real Case for and Against Wheat and Gluten. Mm -hmm. He's here to clear up some of the controversy um, around glutenophobia. Gluten yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've always been skeptical of all of this. Oh, right, uh, I, I can't know. have gluten all of a sudden in the yeah. past couple of years. Exactly. Like, Okay. And then we're going to speak with Dr. Dale Archer, board certified uh, psychiatrist and New York Times bestselling author of The ADHD Advantage. Mm -hmm. Why you th what you first thought was a diagnosis may be your greatest strength. This is very interesting yeah. stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we'll hear what's new in American medicine today. But up first. In today's Back to Life segment, we will talk to a patient of the Bonatti Spine Institute who went from living a life that was restricted by pain and discomfort through their journey of finding the Bonatti Spine Institute and are now living pain-free. Well, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our in-studio guest, patient Aaron Bain. And you're in what, Palm Harbor, Newport Ritchie? I'm up in Newport there? Ritchie. In Newport mm -hmm. Ritchie. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, you have quite the story. Why don't you tell us how you came to be in pain? Was it an accident, something degenerative in nature? Well, first of all, it's an honor to be here, and, and I'm grateful for Dr. Bonatti. Um, I, uh, I broke my neck in 96 okay. w working as a construction equipment hauler. Mm -hmm. I slipped off one of the trucks Ooh. and uh, broke C5, C6. Oof. 
I had a fusion from my left hip into my neck, okay. which was, to me, the worst surgery I've ever seen and okay. the worst results afterwards. Meaning, for those who don't know, they took <clears throat> what, hip bone. Hip bo mm -hmm. uh, bone from your hip and fused it in your neck. Correct. At another wow. facility, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And I had, <clears throat> I had uh, such um, pain that came out of that that I was taking 7-hydrocodone, and it wasn't taking the edge off of it. Wow. Um, there was, uh, I was running out of options after the uh, the workers' comp case closed sure. to acquire medication that would handle the pain level. Mm. Right. And I went into a variety of meditation, um, tai chi, all kinds of stuff to try to uh, alleviate the pain and try to, to work through it. Mind over right. matter kind of yes. stuff. Yeah. Well, right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it also gave me a very uh, big distrust for doctors. Okay. Um, the uh, doctor that worked on my neck back then uh, stated after the year and a half of recovery mm -hmm. that uh, I didn't do bad for an operation that I didn't have to have. Mm. That you didn't have to have, but yet you underwent it. Right, and I didn't know at the time I didn't oh. have to have it because I was pushed into it. Right, you wouldn't have agreed to a procedure that you didn't need. Right, right. it's right. just they didn't tell you that. Right, right. right. <clears throat> what was your range of motion like after that fusion? Uh, it was horrible. Um, I had uh, very limited neck movement laterally, okay, uh, left and right, and uh, I could easily put my... Uh, chin down on my shoulder on my chest sure but I, raising my head up was oh. a totally different story mm. now how you how long did you struggle in pain was it for 19 years yes it was 19 years uh, I did everything that I could do mm -hmm. to uh, work through that at mm -hmm. one point I, I lived in Dallas and mm -hmm. I was working for IBM mm -hmm. we were putting in 60 to 80 hours a week we had a cold front come through, mm -hmm. and I was literally crippled, laying on my bed for three days in pain because I just could not move, and I almost got fired over that. Unbelievable. Wow. Quickly describe for the listeners what your pain was. Was it a shooting pain? I had every kind of pain that you could imagine. Um, mm -hmm. I've had the burning sensations. I've had the feeling like there was a cold sheet of steel okay. wedged in my spine. Eek. The uh, the prickling feelings, the uh, pulsing, burning and, and, of course, the underlying ache that just never went away. Yeah. Um, how did you, what was that journey to Dr. Benatti's? Did you seek out any other doctors along the way? Well, in uh, January of this year, I mm -hmm. slipped and fell in my kitchen. Okay. And it, it damaged all of the uh, muscles mm -hmm. up in my shoulders. A few weeks later, I realized, hey, the shoulder pain is gone. Right the neck pain has gotten much worse. Okay. And it gradually has had gotten to a point that I was in really bad condition. Mm. I went to LSI, uh, Laser Spine Institute. Mm. Uh, I had a period of three months that I talked to them. Okay. They did not uh, want me to talk to a doctor until two days prior to surgery, no matter how many times I said, look, I have specific questions I need to ask. Right. When it came time to do the surgery, they said, well, you live outside of our radius. You have to pay for a hotel. Uh -huh. My wife is the only one working. Right. We have right. five kids. Mm -hmm. There's no way we could afford a hotel in Tampa that our car wouldn't get stolen at. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we said, okay, that's a deal breaker. Uh, they gave us our money back. And immediately I found Dr. Bonatti online. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the credentials and I realized, hey, he started the entire process that mm -hmm. LSI is using. Mm. Or so if pretending he, they use. Well, yeah. if they, if they, if he originated it, right. then he's got to be the master of it. Indeed. Yeah. So I went to the website, I put in for the information kit. An hour later, I got a phone call from Jenna. Okay. And uh, three or four hours later, I got a call from Dr. Bonatti himself. Mm. That floored me. Just the founder of the institute, the founder of the whole procedure, called you back. Which yeah. really shouldn't be that surprising. It I mean, you know, that's the mm. way it really should yes. be. It's just not like that anywhere, no. you know. But Dr. Bernardi cares about his patients and mm -hmm. will pick up the phone and call him specifically. I was deeply impressed by that. Mm -hmm. um, just the fact that he did that alone. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I feel like I, I'm really in the right place now. So when you came in and uh, Dr. Bernardi looked at your MRI, what was that like? Uh, he walked in very quietly. Put the MRIs on the screen, uh, 
looked at him for about 30 seconds, turned around and said, you are in very bad pain. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I am. And he finally, someone gets it. Mm. Right. And so he didn't even have to, or you didn't even have to tell him really what was wrong. He kind of knew just by looking at your MRIs. Right, yeah. right, mm -hmm. yeah. He, he looked right at it, and it, it didn't take him long at all. He was cycling right through them. Uh, I was amazed at the speed and, and the uh, knowledge that he had in it. And I thought, well, you know, he's doing this for 30 years, but still, mm -hmm. I've never seen anyone go through the films that fast and be able to pinpoint it that quick. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the procedure itself. Were you a little apprehensive going into it, I'm sure, having already gone through failed uh, procedures elsewhere? elsewhere? Mm -hmm. Well, when you, when you have a bad experience like that, you look at it and you think, well, I really don't want to trust another doctor, but the pain is immense. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to give him a shot. Mm -hmm. And the very first uh, surgery that I had, I noticed a, a significant difference. Mm -hmm. The second surgery I had, sitting in the uh, uh, recovery room, I had absolutely no pain. Right. It wow. was the first time in 20 years that I had no pain at all. Wow. So it was that immediate. Yes. Wow. Did, yeah. did you feel a difference in your disposition? Extremely. Um, I had always been kind of a jerk for those 19 years because the pain <laughs> equates to yeah. anger. Yes, it well, does. Well, yeah, you're so, uncomfortable constantly. Well, yeah. you're, you're, you're mad at people for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. Correct. And uh, combined with the history of fighting that I've had, that could have been a very dangerous thing. Yeah. Sure. When, um, just quickly, do you remember interacting with Dr. Benatti during the surgery? Uh, vaguely, yes. Yes. But uh, I do remember... Uh, <laughs> Uh, he, uh, he he's he's comical, but he's very serious about yes. his job. Yes, very uh, laser focused, <clears throat> as we like to say. And how if, are you today? <laughs> yes, extraordinary, yeah. extraordinary. I still have one surgery left to go through, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I've never felt so good in my life, mm -hmm. and I, I don't remember feeling this way. I don't remember how to be nice uh. now. Uh, no, no, I, you may not need the, the surgery. You feel so good. Now. You know, I just wanted to say you you were feeling so much better that you told me that you're looking to start a company. Actually, I am a home based company. Very so, cool. yeah. um, um, yeah, just quickly, we're starting uh, Deadwood Barbecue Products. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a new market of products that isn't anywhere on the market. It's not packaged the way that we package mm -hmm. it, and it's not being offered the mm -hmm. way we're offering it. Um, and without without a patent, I'm really kind of you know, strapped to it. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but you know what? That's all because you're starting to feel better. Yes. And you have a more positive outlook on life. So congratulations. I'm so glad that we helped you regain your strength and, and get back in motion. I, I'm, I'm thankful a, a thousand times to Dr. Bonatti for yeah. what he's done for me. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks one, of, one of the major troubles that he had is uh, sympathetic dystrophy. Oh, And that RSD. sympathetic dystrophy was an incredible pain. Uh, they cannot even touch the skin because mm. they burn, and 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 if you touch this pain associated with, so oh. he was he was in very bad shape. Wow. Well, thanks again, uh, Appreciate Mr. It, Bain. Aaron. You, you know, if someone you know is suffering just like Aaron Bain um, with mm -hmm. RSD or any of those other problems, reach out to Benati at Benati.com. Coming up after the break, well, we're going to speak with Stephen Yaffa, award-winning screenwriter, journalist, and author of Grain of Truth, the whole controversy behind gluten phobia. Make sure you stay tuned. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. 
Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done, and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs>
are self-reported as being sensitive to gluten in the mm-hmm. best cl- uh, clinical tests, and yet 35, approximately 30, 35% of us think we might have gluten sensitivity. So you can see there's mm-hmm. a disproportionate amount of people who think they're gluten sensitive compared to ones who may actually be. Um, and the answer to your question right. is that in order to uh, be able to eat gluten safely, for most of us, mm-hmm. and we're not talking about celiacs who can't eat wheat at all, but for the rest of us, um, the um, long fermentation that comes from sourdough fermentation where lactic acid becomes uh, a part of bacteria, become part of the mix in the dough, uh, breaks down the gluten molecules into smaller peptides, which are really small strings of amino acids. And they uh, basically have a much easier time being digested through your intestines and, they, and the Sourdough processing itself slows uh, the the conversion of sugar, of of starch into sugar through your bloodstream. So it's got a lot of benefits, and it delivers in long fermented um, fermented sourdough really delivers the nutrients Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, wheat to your system in the in in the most beneficial form. What are some of the side effects if you do suffer with that? What are some of the symptoms that people deal with? Well, if you do have real sensitivity to gluten, you're going to feel bloated. You're okay. going to have potentially mind, uh, what's called brain fog. You're going to have, you know, uh, potentially have skin rashes. Okay. Uh, there are other issues as well, joint aches. Those are essentially the, mm. the ones that are most common, and fatigue. Those are the ones that are most commonly uh, cited. And again, uh-huh. the, 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 resu- the, the cause of those is really quite unclear, considering all the publicity that non-gluten has gotten. Mm-hmm. There's a whole issue about uh, carbohydrates from about 28 different fruits and vegetables called FODMAPs that don't really um, di- get digested completely, and mm-hmm. they get into the large intestine and start to ferment, and they can mm-hmm. cause some of the symptoms that are mistaken for gluten sensitivity so you can see how quickly this gets more complicated uh you know uh in a blink of an eye but that's that's you know the answer to your question and Stephen, you mentioned in the book from what i've read here uh in grain of truth you talk about how in america in the united states a lot of the reason why we think we're gluten sensitive could be because bread is so mass produced and it's not as i guess organic or you know, natural as, uh, say, over in Europe. Is that the case? Yes, very much so. In fact, if you try to ferment something the way that most industrial bakeries do it in four hours from start to finish, Mm -hmm. you're cutting through a process that normally takes two days in the sourdough fermentation, long fermentation. And the difference we pay for in terms of our health, not all of us for sure, but a lot of us who might be gluten sensitive, because one thing that comes out of that shortcut is that the gluten molecules don't get broken down at all into these digestible units. And it's also one of the things, I think probably the major thing, that is really not mentioned by uh, grain brain or uh, wheat belly. Um, It tends to really uh, have a major beneficial effect on the carbohydrates in uh, wheat. So that would be why when I took my trip to Rome and I had pasta there, it sat differently in my stomach there than it did back here in the United States. Yes, and a lot of people can really have had the same experience. It's also prepared in an al dente way, mm-hmm. you know, typically in Europe, which really, you know, is a much better for your system. You know, when you start to overdo, the uh, not only is the wheat softer and generally contains a little less gluten, but it's also prepared in a way that is more beneficial usually, uh, certainly in Italy than it is here, where pasta is cooked within an inch of its life often, and that creates all sorts of issues in terms of the speed with which it rushes into your system and creates havoc potentially for people who are sensitive. Well, Stephen, we're just about out of time. What is the, uh, what's the biggest takeaway from this book to cut through the hype, and what is the truth behind Grain of Truth? Uh, the, um, the essence of uh, my message is this. Uh, don't believe everything you read. You know, pay attention to your own systems. Stay away from processed foods. And if you love bread but are concerned about eating it, go to your local artisan bakery, buy a loaf of whole wheat sourdough, and see what happens. <laughs> buy it from somebody who actually made it. There exactly. you go. Exactly. Well, thank yeah, you. Exactly. Thank you, Stephen Yaffa, award-winning screenwriter, journalist, and author of Grain of Truth, The Real Case for and Against Wheat and Gluten. Why don't you tell everyone where they can pick up your book? 
I will. You can pick it up at your local independent bookstore. You can pick it up at Barnes & Noble. And, of course, you can pick it up at Amazon. And if you have questions, please go to uh, grainoftruthbook.com. That will lead you to my website where you can uh, ask me questions. And I, since I started uh, doing this, I've mm-hmm. gotten some interesting questions from people, and I'm more than happy uh, to refer them to uh, medical professionals whom I know if, if, if they're interested in more more information. Sounds but good. Thank you very much, Stephen. Have a great day. Have a great one. Thank you. Thanks, both of you. Take uh, care. You're welcome. Interesting well, stuff. Interesting stuff you hear weekly on American Medicine Today. Make sure you stay tuned. Coming up after the break, you'll hear more. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already, I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I am feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer, Ethan Euchre. Always glad to be here. Well, we have an exciting segment. We're here with Dr. Dale Archer, board-certified psychiatrist and New York Times best-selling author. His latest book is called The Eight. ADHD Advantage, what you thought was a diagnosis may be your greatest strength. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Archer. Great to be here. I wanted to start out, Dr. Archer, by saying, you know, we've spoken with some other experts on this topic, and Mm -hmm. uh, the diagnosis of ADHD um, has been an epidemic, really, in the past decade. Do you think this is strictly an American thing? We really kind of only see it here in the States, don't you think? It's absolutely only an American thing. Uh, If you look at the rates around the developed world, I mean, they're very, very much lower than we are. For example, in the U.K., it's about 2%. In France, it's about 0.5%. And the crazy thing is even within the U.S., there's a wide variability from state to state. You look at Nevada, it's less than 6%. Louisiana pushing 16%. So not only is it overdiagnosed in the U.S., but it's very, very random in terms of where those diagnoses are taking place. 
And one thing that really mm-hmm. attracted me to this book and made me want to speak with you is not only has there been an epidemic of diagnosis, but sort of one of the angles in your book is that a lot of the quote unquote traits of uh, ADHD that mm-hmm. lead to a diagnosis of that can actually be very helpful in your personal and professional adult life. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I think that the big problem is that the diagnosis of ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, those two Ds, which imply, wow, this is a really bad deal. You know, I have a deficit, I have a disorder, I'm sick, uh, how can I ever lead a normal life? And they're talking about all of the negatives that go along with it. Well, what's been lost throughout all of this is the fact mm-hmm. that there are tremendous strengths within the ADHD trait. No one's saying anything about those. And finally, we're getting some scientific studies that are coming out. And we're finding that uh, strengths such as resilience and creativity Mm -hmm. and the ability to hyper-focus, cool in a crisis, uh, being able to multitask, high energy, intuitive, Mm -hmm. all of these things can be used. But the problem is we're taking the ADHD or from the time they were a child And we're trying to make them into a quote-unquote normal person. So we're not playing to the strengths. We're Mm -hmm. focusing on the weaknesses and trying to turn them into just like everybody else. But they're not. And as a result, they're having these problems. But they're not. They're turning them into more or less zombies. (laughs) And you explained this explorer gene. And you said that they're shared uh, by the likes of Da Vinci, Meriwether, uh, Lewis, uh, Benjamin Franklin, other world changers. So it's more or less a positive, not necessarily a negative. And then you also go on to mention that there's a Massachusetts school that refuses to regard ADHD as a negative, and they're trying to focus these children's efforts in a different way, and they're getting astonishing results. Right. Well, to, you're talking about the Beacon Hill School, which yes. is just a, one of the leaders in terms of working with these kids and recognizing that, hey, it's not a disorder, it's a difference. Mm-hmm. And in terms of the Explorer gene, that's a fascinating uh, area of study. And one study that really stands out is that they looked at the dopamine receptor and transporter genes, and they looked for variability, which is found very mm-hmm. commonly among ADHDers. Okay. And what they did was they looked at populations all around the world, and they found a preponderance of these genes in the far reaches of the planet, Tierra del Fugo, Alaska, Siberia. So these were the wanderers, the travelers, the people that were bored sitting home in the village and just wanted to get out and go. Right. And, of course, in today's world, we're saying, no, no, you're not fitting in if we do that. We have to make you like everyone else. You have to sit in class for eight hours a day. You have to focus. You have to study. Mm-hmm. On and on and on. So it's basically they're taking the ADHD brain, and they're trying to turn it into the non-ADHD brain. And as you alluded to, of course, medication has become the default treatment for doing so. Correct. See, and I've always thought that, you know, had I grown up, I mean, I'm only 35, but had I grown up 10, 15 years ago, <laughs> We'd be they would drugs. say that I'd, you know, I'd yes. be on drugs, but I've always thought that I just have kind of an active mind and I get bored mm-hmm. with things really quickly. I mean, do you think that that's the case, uh, Dr. Archer? Well, I will tell you that, yeah, I mean, if I had uh, grown up 30 years later, I would have been diagnosed and and slept on meds. There's not a doubt in my mind, (laughs) because I'm tremendously ADHD even to this day. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, it's just the ADHD as a diagnosis didn't come along until 1980 in the Mm -hmm. DSM. And so all of a sudden from 1980 to today, we've had this huge spike in rates all the way up to 11 percent, which is where we are now. And you got to wonder, wow, does one in 10 kids have ADHD? Yeah. And, of course, 50% of those are medicated. Well, I, I don't think it's so much the kids have the problem. I think that people have become less patient because we've taken the kids from outside. We've put them inside. We've given them um, electronics to utilize. And when they want to do something else and actually be the kids mm-hmm. the way they should be, I, I remember not coming home until the streetlights came on. And you'd be in the forest. You'd be looking at creatures, you'd be picking up plants, you'd be exploring, you'd be curious. Mm -hmm. Now when you go to do that, people look at you like they're crazy. They're like, wait a minute, I'd have to watch you outside? I don't want to do that. Let's get you inside. Here's a nice electronic device. Go use this. Here's some riddle. You can't be controlled. Here, take a pill. (laughs) Right. No, you're absolutely right. And I think that 
the reason that we used to say in the old days that kids outgrew ADHD when mm -hmm. they got to college is not that they outgrew it. The ADHD brain remains throughout your entire life, but it's because they can do things their own way. So when you're in high school and, and junior high and mm -hmm. elementary, you're told this is how you have to study, you have to sit, you have to be quiet, you have to stay in class all day, and these are the subjects you have to study. Correct. When you get to college, you pick what you want, that you walk in between classes, you study any way that you want. So we see time after time that kids that struggle through their early education, when they get to college, they bloom. And my son is a classic example. C student all the way through high school, gets to college, takes what he wants, becomes a straight-A student. Right. And his method of studying, he would be chatting, he would have a sports event on, he would have music on, right. and he would be doing two subjects at once. And that's how his brain was able to focus and do the best. Well, and that's what I... That's what I personally didn't like about school as well, is that it's so confining and they force mm -hmm. feed you this stuff that you're not interested in. And then you get bored and you're staring out the window or you're doodling on your notebook. The fundamentals. Instead of paying attention to some of the stuff. But it's but when you're able to focus that, yes. you know, that with a laser beam accuracy on what you want and what you find interesting, you know, mm -hmm. you, you always excel. And actually in your book, Dr. Archer, The ADHD Advantage, you actually have some case studies of celebrities. You want to detail a couple of those? Well, probably the most fun to talk to was Howie Mandel. Okay. Uh, and, uh, that doesn't, we that doesn't shock 30, me. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to have a 30-minute interview, and it stretched to almost two hours. And, of course, he had me laughing throughout almost the entire deal. But he had a horrible time when he was young and, and going mm -hmm. through school. I mean, he was sent to the principal's office. He was punished. He was in <laughs> detention and <laughs> very, very impulsive. Mm. Well, of course, the very things that got him into trouble, the risk-taking and the impulsivity, mm. were what led to him being one of the greatest comedians in mm -hmm. the world today, mm -hmm. is he would act on impulse and intuition and do it without thinking, and of course, typically was spot on with his actions, and the results are staggering. And of course, he looks back and, and is also one of the few people that I talked to who had already made the connection in his mind mm -hmm. that, wow, I'm where I am, not in spite of ADHD, but because of ADHD. Well, he also has OCD, too, yes. obsessive compulsive disorder, correct? So, I mean, that guy's just got a storm of disorders going on in his head, at least according to uh, right. the health industry these days. No, no, yeah, he does have OCD, uh, but he's <laughs> very, very clear. He can separate the, the symptoms of the two different uh, issues, and it's very rare, actually, to see those two conditions in one person. Mm -hmm. Don't see that very often they're almost like the exact opposite of each other but we right. do see it occasionally and he will credit the ADHD in terms of getting him to where he is he does though have problems with the OCD and says you know if they could yeah. develop something to take that away from him, he would be very very happy on the other hand he would not want to lose the ADHD characteristics that he has right because they're saying these characteristics also not only are uh, they're actors and actresses and athletes, but entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, what I do in the book, of course, there are certain careers where you intuitively think, yeah, we can probably find a large number of ADHDers. Mm -hmm. Uh, athletes being one that, uh, you know, professional baseball players, they did a study and found that the rate in adults there was twice the general population. Uh, individuals such as Mark Spitz credits the ADHD because he was such a failure and such a troublemaker in school. The only way that he found relief was to get in the pool and practice, and the other mm -hmm. kids were going out and doing other kid things. Mm -hmm. And for him, the focus on just swimming gave him so much pleasure and so much relief, he was able to practice that much harder and become that much better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of entertainers, it makes sense. Entrepreneurs is a very, very interesting uh, a subset, which I've done a lot of research on, and it turns out that being an entrepreneur is tailor-made for the ADHD brain. I mean, you're risk-taking, you're starting something new, there's no certainty in it, you're multitasking, it's something you love because you picked it so you can hyper-focus on it. Uh, it appears that the ADHD brain is drawn to being an entrepreneur, and actually there's some anecdotal studies that show that those who found their own business are three times more likely to have the ADHD trait than those who do not. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, uh, we're just about out of time, but Dr. Archer, any advice for parents who, you know, they have hyperactive kids? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you're probably saying don't put them on pills, but what can they do to sort of harness that energy in a positive way? 
Well, I think education is the key. And look, I am not opposed to medication, but I think that the problem is medication has become a first resort and not a last. The thing for parents to understand, ADHD occurs along a continuum. It's not an on-off switch. So it occurs from one, which is very, very mild symptoms, all the way up to 10 and 10 plus, which is severe. And now if you have the 9 or the 10 or the 10 plus uh, method of symptoms, then you probably do need treatment, maybe medication as a last resort. The problem now is we're diagnosing those in the 5 to 8 range. We're taking those in the middle of the road, slapping the diagnosis on them, and we're treating them the same way that we treat the severe cases. So what I would say with a parent is if you do have a child that you suspect has ADHD, you've got to get them to a specialist, not a family practitioner, not a pediatrician, a child psychiatrist who specializes in ADHD and who will then give you options of therapy and different methods of parenting skills and different types of ways to work with that child that don't entail medication. If all that fails, Then and only then should you consider meds. Well, thank you for joining us, Dr. Dale Archer, board-certified psychiatrist and New York Times bestselling author of ADHD Advantage, what you thought was a diagnosis may be your greatest strength. Thanks for being our guest. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You're listening to American Medicine Today. Um, Hopefully we'll have him on again. That was good stuff. Yeah, Yeah. it was good stuff. Make Mm -hmm. sure you stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now, I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome's been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. You are listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer, Ethan Euchre. Happy to be here. Our senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Present. And across from me is world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. Hello. Let's look at what's new in medicine today, featuring Alfred Bonatti, MD. Well, we're continuing the discussion from last week about how insurance companies are causing um, all sorts of problems with our health care system. 
Well, if you if you really know how horrendous ripoff is the insurance companies, mm -hmm. look at do. look at look at the mergers that they just have this last month or so. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Anthem just acquired um, Cigna, Cigna mm -hmm. for fifty four billion dollars. Billion, billion with dollars. Billion. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, why that amount of money in the and and it's not really performing decent on the on the, on the market of the healthcare. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, look at the other one. Humana is acquired by Aetna, who is a horrible insurance, <laughs> and uh, this uh, is being in another another acquisition with thirty eight billion dollars. Yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. 37. 37. Who, yeah. who is oh, 37? Mm -hmm. 37 billion dollars. Yep. Now, the problem is. What's a few billion here and there? I, well, no, and the, the, major, yeah. the major trouble with this is the executives are getting all this enormous amount of yeah. salaries, mm -hmm. and the, the insurance companies are ripping off totally the, the, the insurer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, they are taking all the money that they can take with the Copays yes. and and deductibles mm -hmm. and all this trash that they invented to be able to take money from the people. Yes, and then they offered them a very poor, uh, reliable insurance mm -hmm. because when they go to a doctor, so the doctor has two problems or need to accept some type of reduction in prices from the insurance companies that they are manipulated, right. totally illegal, mm -hmm. <laughs> but but uh, uh, yeah. they don't have any resources. Right. And, and the problem is uh, we, we don't need to pay this game. Mm -hmm. This game is being played because we allowed the people to play this game. What we need to go is we need to go to a market and, and go and play the market. And to do that is we said, our product cost X amount of dollars, and you pay me. I will fill up all the all the insurance pa papers for your insurance, mm -hmm. and you go and fight your insurance. Mm -hmm. And when the people start to fight the insurance, you correct this market. Mm -hmm. This is this is the way to do it. You need to go and free yourself from the from the octopus <laughs> of the insurance companies. <laughs> And, and, and once for all, start mm -hmm. to play the market independent. Well, all eight arms are dipping into those billions upon billions <laughs> of dollars. And then those arms also go into all their pockets. And they right. line their pockets and their wallets here, with that money. And they're not providing I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about this while you're talking, Doc. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I like to, to sort of break things down. And Kimberly knows me and my analogies. <laughs> but um, here's the way I look at it in insurance as a whole. Mm -hmm. If you go to the store... You don't need insurance that you may need milk next week. You right. know you're probably going to need it, so you go and buy it, right. right? So the whole insurance concept to me is sort of confusing. You know yes. eventually you're your gonna health it. is going to deteriorate. Accidents are going to happen. Things right. are going to happen. But that's why so you pay why your do premium. we need insurance at all? Just yeah. you, you know well, what I mean? The thought is is that everybody pays in a certain amount right. so and that it's, 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 it's managed no. so that when you have a catastrophic catastrophic situation mm -hmm. right. you're covered but the reality is the they insurance companies with collect the cash but they never yes. want to release it in some of the show prep that you did here ethan <sighs> mm -hmm. and i never the average person would never have heard this mm -hmm. the insurance companies when they have to pay out the payout is called a <laughs> medical loss yes mm. now yes. that's their purpose is to pay the freaking bills <laughs> right. but they look at it as yes. a medical loss Loss. Yes, because it's a business to well, them. Your health care doesn't matter. Right. It is totally a business. If they can keep you from the help you need, then they make a profit and they get their bonuses. No, when it's you totally when ridiculous. you when you go and you call medical lost, what you are doing is you are not paying taxes. Hmm. This is tax deductible. It's like mm -hmm. write off. Okay, right. it's a write off. Mm -hmm. right. So if the company produced ten million and you and you and you pay right. two million. I Those two million are cue the right violins. off. Cue the violins, <laughs> okay? Because and they all claim this loss. is manipulated by the Congress. Right. This is the politicians now being bought by private in by by, mm -hmm. by, by private interests mm -hmm. and, and manipulated with the insurance companies. Right. So what we have here is a, again the situation right. that we have with Trump. Nobody we need an individual who comes over and create. Nobody oh. knows their sorrow. Kimberly wanted that violence, is the so. <laughs> sound of sweet sorrow of 
all the insurance companies as they write off their losses. <laughs> and make millions of dollars. they make <laughs> millions and sometimes even billions hand over fist I was interrupted with those for losses. This. <laughs> yes, you were because it's such crud. Mm-hmm. But then that's not the problem. I didn't finish the. I know. Now he's talking about Trump. I'm sorry. When somebody go ahead. When somebody asks for sound effects, my head goes into sound effect mode. I'm like, I gotta find a violin now. I appreciate. Makes me feel like we need to go to the insurance companies with a deal they can't refuse. No, Uh, no. What we need to go. Why why we we need to go is we need to wise up and we need to go to a to a to a pay for fee. A fee, mm-hmm. fee you, right. you, you have a product, and that product costs this amount, and that's why you do it. Correct. It's the same thing that happened in, in plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Plastic surgeries, plastic surgeons don't have any problem with insurance companies. Right. They don't okay. deal with it. Sure. And this why? Very simple. They don't need it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay? And everybody who goes to a plastic surgeon knows that this is what it's going to cost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Approximately the same okay. number of dollars for X product Right. By all the plastic what surgeons. were you going to say about Trump? Because I know I cut you off. <laughs> well, Just quickly summarize. Uh, I, was, I was saying that we need, we need a force with that quality. Mm-hmm. We need somebody with that power. The same thing that happens with immigration, mm-hmm. that noise that he created mm-hmm. needs to be created in medicine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. needs to be a, so in a, in a voice mm-hmm. that accused the insurance companies not only in corruption, yes. but at the same time being in cahoot with, with, with the government mm-hmm. and with the politicians. So what happened is the product yes. is bad and will remain bad. Okay. Anyway, you're watching and listening to American That's Medicine That's not a bad today. idea. If you have any <laughs> topics or questions, you can reach out. You can tweet at Dr. Benatti or hashtag American Medicine Today. You can call our comment line, 727-495-5200. And make sure you turn into Bloomberg Saturdays and Sundays. Check your local listings in the evenings, WFTS, ABC 28, Saturdays at 7. See you next time. Bye. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results, no pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone, nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now, I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail.